I am jumping for joy to be in Sioux Lookout, Ontario. I'm staying on an island resort at Winoga Lodge here. An amazing place. It's flying tight fishing at a drive to resort. I got my boat here. I got Troy Mansfield on the controls. Woo! I'm in, Troy. All right, you ready to go fish like so? Go see if we get some fall walleyes and some trophy muskies. Enough games, yeah. This is like a trophy muskie oasis with giant monster muskies, but they've got giant bass, giant pike, giant walleye, giant everything, and giant, we're going- Giant lake trout even. Giant lake trout even. And right now Troy's taking us to uh, pound on some walleyes. Yeah, we're we'll going for some walleyes this morning. Lac Sewell is a giant reservoir, a lot like a lot of the big reservoirs in the States. It's dammed up at the other end, and it's got all sorts of finger bays off it and stuff. And right now, at this time of the year, the fish have all moved out of those finger bays that they're in in June, July, and they're all down in the basin. So Troy has us out here on a super main lake point. Yeah, right here, we're up in this area that goes out a long ways out of the deep water. Uh, this big peninsula, like we just came out of 107 feet. It's gonna come up quite drastic. You're gonna start seeing a lot of fish being marked on it here. Even when you're destination trophy angling, you still can't just drop a line anywhere. It's still all those fish concentrated in small areas. And we've already thrown down a few waypoints here where we mark some fish. And Troy's just kind of zigzagging the rest of this reef to see if that's definitely where we want to fish. Now we're making our way back to those waypoints. We haven't seen any other fish on this other area. So we're going to go back and drop down on those ones. You can see already, we're coming back to this area and there's some fish mark in there. I'm going to be drop shotting and Troy's gonna be using a rattle bait to shake them up, or maybe vice versa. Do you wanna go delicate or you wanna go crash and bang? Uh, give me the uh, rattle. So we're gonna have like a, a one-two punch on these fish to see what they wanna go for. And shouldn't need bait. Troy says that uh, a lot of people are using bait out here, which is fine, it works great for the fish, but uh, there's artificial techniques you can use that'll work just as good. Is that right? That is right. <laughs> Market fish? Yeah. Oh yeah, you do. You can see on the graph there. He's chasing it. <laughs> hey. oh, oh yeah. And he's on. Uh, grab the net. I got it, that's a little guy. So you don't need the net is what you're getting at? That's not something we can really use there, Troy. It is a walleye though. I'm just holding that on the spot, lightly moving it. You almost don't need to do anything when you're drop shotting. You don't need to be kicking it at all. That bait, even when you're trying to hold it still, is doing some, some motion and you've got that weight sitting on the bottom so you know your bait's sitting up off it. On, baby. Drop shot. You get this the set there, Jay? Yep. Uh, not bad. It's a good size walleye, Troy. Yeah. I think I can sling them in. Um, ooh, okay, a little bit big to be flinging. <laughs> nice walleye there. How big is that, Troy? Oh, let's see, about three and a half, four pounds. Just, try, just trying to include Troy. I've seen walleyes this size before back home. <laughs> yeah, he's a thick one. Nice fish, and he's almost got a green tinge to him like some of the greenbacks back home have. Do, do all the fish here have that? Yeah, well, the fish here in this part of Lac still do have that coloring in this, uh, this region. I don't know, it has something to do with the, uh, you know, <laughs> the soil. <laughs> Micro walleye? Sauger. You guys have saugers here? Not Freaking there. rights, folks. That's what I'm getting with the drop shot. It looks more like a live minnow than a dead minnow looks. It's so simple. Are you on? Yeah, little guy. Are you kidding me? You're just plucking the smallest walleyes out of here? Yeah. That's really bad. See if you can talk about something interesting with that little fish. So that's a pretty healthy looking fish. Yeah, pretty, really pretty healthy looking. Anyways. Good colors. <laughs> I just know what to say <laughs> about that. Jeez. That was quick. Like, absolutely serious, eh? <laughs> Get a shot of that. We got a shot of that? Hold it out, Troy. Like, make it look good. They're smacking that jackal rattle bait, eh? <laughs> they are. Drop him back. Just this little guy hit her. Good colors, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty nice colors. Look like a healthy fish. I'm on. I think mine might be bigger than yours. I hope so. <laughs> pretty ironic because we're showcasing two very different styles of, of baits here and mine's the finesse approach. Oh, come to Papa. There he is. 
Another gorgeous Laxul fish. Maybe a 19, 20 inch walleye. Pretty uh, run of the mill, but when you're catching them quite readily, pretty awesome. Back in. On the drop shot. And I'm using Jackal Pintail Minnow here, four inch. And you can see this minnow is ultra realistic. You can see the translucency there, just like an actual bait fish would be. And I'm just hooking it right in the nose of that bait. And then it's got the maximum swimming action. And I cast it out there. I got a weight clipped on the bottom here. And these drop shot weights have a little clip on them that I can actually, if I get in a snag, I just pull it and that clip breaks free. And the lead stays down there in the bottom and then I can just clip on another one really quick. So let's pretend this is another one after getting snagged. I grab the other end with my teeth just to cinch it in there. And now that's locked in there and it's got a little pinch point that's gonna naturally cut the line sooner than cutting my knot. This is walleye fishing, folks. We don't do a lot of walleye fishing and uncut angling, but that's kind of the main deal on Lac Sewell. So we've forced Troy to take us for them. We're catching walleyes, but I don't think it's going to last long. We might go, uh, what are we going to go for, Troy? Muskie lunch. Muskies, the big ones. <laughs> what, uh, what are you looking at for musky spots? Oh, we're looking for rock piles with uh, timber incorporated with maybe some saddles towards shorelines next to some deep water, maybe you know, areas that have more current than tend not to. Um, but basically, we're going to be pounding some shorelines at, with some deep drop-offs with timber and rock. See what we can pull out, maybe have some cabbage in certain areas. Yeah, Troy listed like basically everything awesome there. It yeah, good. it was vague. <laughs> Rock reefs, it's good if there's timber nearby. Now see people up, I'm telling you, reefs, <laughs> hey. timber, saddle, deep water. Did I call this? Holler at your boy. <laughs> Guess what? There's current here. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, let's go hit it. It's going to be prime time here shortly. Right there, what you can see for baits underneath the fish finders. That's all the musky baits we have on the boat today. So we're gonna use very basic stuff. What's the number one musky bait? Say bucktail. Oh, it'd probably be a bucktail for sure, I'd think. Anywhere you're musky fishing in the summertime, it's a bucktail, it's blades. Here's what I'm gonna throw is a Dadson blade bait, which is just following the craze of two number 10 blades on a bucktail with the tinsel, except this one is built with super thick wire, super strong, heavy duty. It's got an extra weight in the back here, so it casts really far and sits uh, low in the water when you're reeling it in fast. It's the wee worm color to commemorate my tapeworm. Thank you, Johnny Dadson. You can see that that color here, that brownish in this tannic water is gonna be a good bet. Anything dark though is usually good for muskies. You're gonna ride the surface. Yeah, I'm gonna run the surface with the top water bait, making lots of noise, making lots of splash. Keep it simple. Let's do it. Do you feel like Samson? Or maybe you don't know that story? No, I don't know who Samson is. Oh, he's from the Bible. He had really long hair. And this, that's a fish! On! On, boys! I don't know how big it is. Pretty big, pretty big. It's definitely pretty big. Here we go, weave worm, take one, net on, done, over. Woo! <laughs> now about Samson? <laughs> Something about, okay, so Samson in the Bible, was I right to know that story? He had really long hair, longer than mine probably, and he was dating this, I don't know, is hussy the right word? And she cut his hair in his sleep, and he lost all his strength, and what I'm liking that to is Troy used to be a big, strong bushman with a giant beard, and now he's just a little guy. A dainty. With yeah. no beard. Is she good, Troy? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. There we go. You got a beautiful fish there, Aaron. That's good work. Mid 40s, 45, 46 incher. Bucktail. Yeah. Tranks on. Okay, I'm gonna put it right back in, bud. This should be a real easy release on this fish. It's the water temperatures are actually relatively cool for this time of year. They're only in the low 70s, 71 today I think was the high. We're out of our hot spell here, so. Yeah. Fish to survival rate. 
really low mortality rate on them. They have no problem making it back. That fish will be here to be caught again. It's a lot more ethical to be fishing in this. We actually saved coming up here. We had talked with Troy about coming up to Anoga to fish muskies a few days ago and the temps were how how crazy hot were they for oh, so many days in a row. It was like a high of 30 degrees Celsius, 35 with the humidex. Yeah. It was hot. We've broken out of it and temps are good. Muskies are good. Thanks, buddy. All right, good work. Uh, do we want to fish these stumps or get out of here? We fish these stumps. You did a really good job netting that fish. I was thinking that it was going to be a bit of a process still. Really? Yeah. I thought we'd have to talk did about it. Did you not have faith in me? No, I did, but I still thought we'd have to talk about it. And I came around the front of the boat and you were just there and like finished them. I seen the fish wasn't ready to bolt. The fish was like in stall mode. Yeah. That's when you got to grab them. Got Game one? On. Got one. Game got on, one. boys. It's going to take me a bit to get in here, so just take your time. Keep his head down. Toppy, baby, toppy. Big mama. You go left. I'll come underneath you on the right. There we go. Second muskie of the day. Is it that simple? Uh, here we are with another beautiful Loxo muskie. Literally within 150 yards of the same, you know, same spot. When they go, when the timing's right, they go, don't they? Because we caught them on two different baits. Yeah. Get her back there, big guy. He's gorgeous. Yeah, good looking fish. Good colors, real uniform. I said don't say good colors. No, he's in pretty good shape. He's a healthy fish, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, I'll grab the bait. You want to uh, you want to say what it's called? The last time that I introduced this bait, he had a guilty smile on his face. I'm not sure why. What's it called again? It's the Big Mama Psycho Sister. Psycho Sister! Yeah, this baby works. Yeah, it sits real low in the water, super heavy bait, and compared to like a top rater or something, it just kicks a lot more water, and it almost mows under the surface, so it's throwing water to the side with the profile, and it's turning it up. It's a sweet bait. Troy Mansfield, third generation outfitter here. Winoga Lodge, Lac Sewell. Couldn't have asked for a better night. Thanks, Troy. Awesome night. Is that okay? Yeah, we're good. Third generation outfitter, did I say it right? Yeah, you did. There was a word I missed. Yeah. Third generation. Yeah, you said it right. Did I say it right? Yeah. I thought you screwed it up. Is that okay, Jay? Yep, that was good. It was a weird color phase that one was in. It was beautiful. Beautiful colors.